Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here, and today a little something different for you. I've got a video practice exam for NA and NP candidates on EIGRP, but we also have a tutorial built into this as well. So you might want to grab something to write with, and we're going to go through a little bit of a drill here. I'm not going to tell you what it's on yet because it kind of ties into the questions. But a couple of the questions here uh, for you CCNAs, you'll certainly know it, but for you NPs it should, or NP candidates, it should be second nature to you. And the reason I'm telling you that is I don't want you to look at these questions and say, okay, I already know this stuff, you know, I'm moving on to the next video. Because there are, there's a great tutorial here and a little bit of a drill that NA and NP candidates alike need to practice on. So jumping into question one here, you've just finished an EIGRP config and you're not quite seeing the subnets that you expected to see. The odds are that you left out a command in your config. What command is that? And granted, that's a little vague, but we have to get kind of used to that too. Just something general I want you to know to look out for there. In question two, a VLSM, IPX, IP, and Apple Talk, which one of those are supported by EIGRP? Question three, what two metrics by default are used by EIGRP's routing algorithm to calculate routes? And of course that ties into question four, what is EIGRP's routing algorithm anyway? So those are the basics. We definitely need to know those, but what I'm going to do here and in this new series of practice exams is work in more scenario-based questions for you. And here we're looking in our EIGRP topology table and we're not doing this one on live equipment, which we usually do in my videos, because I wanted to work with some simpler metrics, because the EIGRP metrics can become, you know, eight, nine digits in length. But let's work with these smaller numbers first to make sure we master this skill. We have four loop-free paths to a single network, and you see the metrics there. We'll come back to that once or twice, but you might want to pause the video and write them down, because I have two questions for you immediately. How many successors are there out of those four routes? and how many feasible successors do we have? How many successors and feasible successors? In question seven, by default, are you going to see paths two, three, and four in the EIGRP routing table? Of course, when you run show IP route or show IP route EIGRP, are you going to see paths two, three, and four by default? And this one pretty much answers that question, but question eight, if not, how can we make paths 2 and 3 appear in the EIGRP routing table without bringing path 4 in? Is that even possible? Is that an all or nothing situation? Or can we bring paths 2 and 3 into the routing table if they're not already there and leave path 4 out? So let's dive right into those answers and in this particular question you most likely left out the no auto summary command. It's not a required command. A lot of people think it is because you see it so often, but it's not going to be there by default. And I do have other videos here on YouTube and on our website uh, that deal with that particular situation, but it's no auto summary that you likely left out, and that just goes right in your EIGRP configuration. Of these four, EIGRP supports all four of them, VLSM, IPX, IP, and Apple Talk. Now what two metrics are used by EIGRP's routing algorithm by default for route calculation? Bandwidth and delay. It's one of the first things you learn about EIGRP, I think. EIGRP's routing algorithm is dual, D-U-A-L. So those are some basics for EIGRP, and here we're going into something a little more complex. We're dealing with these route metrics, and first off we were asked, are there any successors here, and are there any feasible successors here? There's one successor and it is path one because we've been told that these are all loop free paths. So if they're all valid loop free paths, the route with the best metric, the lowest metric is going to be chosen as the successor. Since we were told that all of these other paths are loop free, these are all feasible successors, two, three, and four. Because they are valid, they're loop free, but their metric is higher than that of the successor. Remember, you'll see the successor route in both your routing and topology tables, but you will only see the feasible successors in the topology table. 
Now with question 7, again, by default, will those feasible successors appear in the EIGRP routing table? No, they will not. Only the successor route will actually appear in the routing table. But we might want to bring some of those paths in. And the question here that we were asked, how can we bring those two paths into the routing table without bringing this one in? And we're going to use the variance command to do that. And if you've ever had a bad experience with the variance command, maybe on a practice exam, maybe on the real exam, uh, sometimes it's one of those things that when you read the theory or someone tells you what the theory is, even me, uh, it can sound a little complex and you think you say oh, I think I got it but then when you actually do it you say is that it you know it's a lot like my binary math explanations it's stuff that looks complex but it's really not and that's what we're gonna do here and I'm just gonna bring this up in notepad and we're gonna work with it right here and we've got path one here's our successor and paths two three and four and what the question asked us to do was bring in paths two and three into the routing table and leave path four out and you're going to put that right under your EIGRP config. It's the variance command, and then you're going to enter a numeric value. It is set to 1 by default, and you'll actually see that when you run show IP protocols. But here, what number would we put for the variance command? Well, the variance command is simply a multiplier. And what the EIGRP process does, it takes whatever we put here and multiplies it by the metric of the successor. And then basically says all routes in our table, in our topology table, all the feasible successors that have a metric of less than variance times this will be put into the routing table. Now again, if that's the first time you've heard it or even the hundredth time you've heard it, sometimes you go, oh, okay, you know, I think I got it. Let's put it into action. We simply need to decide what number we can multiply by 1,000 that will result in a number higher than both of these paths have for a metric, but still lower than this one. And we can look at that pretty much and just say immediately that's going to be what? 6? 7? Needs to be 7, because the result is the router will then say, okay, 7 times 1,000 equals naturally 7,000. So now all feasible successors for this destination that have a metric less than 7,000 will be entered into the routing table. And that means that paths 2 and 3 will be brought into the routing table, but path 4 would not. So that's what we want to do. You can set that variance, I believe, up to 255. It's pretty rare you're going to do that. Uh, but there's a reason that we don't just say, okay, uh, variance, you know, 40, and just leave it at that. Well, let's say that path 4 was a feasible successor. It's loop-free, uh, but it has a metric of 45,000. Well, if this metric for this feasible successor is 45 times higher than the successor metric, we probably don't want to use it uh, for load sharing. So what we do instead is just figure out, okay, look at our table and say, okay, I want to bring this path in, I want to bring this path in, but I don't want to bring this other path in. And you simply do your simple math there with the variance command, and that's all there is to it. That's also the kind of thing, Bulldogs, that you can practice with a piece of paper and a pencil. If you've got five minutes, what I call my five-minute rule, these little five-minute periods of practice add up. And if you're in your cube, in your office, at home, I don't care where you are, you're just taking a break, take a piece of paper and a pencil with you, you can practice a little bit of binary right then and there, you can practice a little variance command, and that little five minutes here, ten minutes there really adds up on exam day. Thanks for watching this particular video. Like I said, we've got a lot more scenario-based questions coming up and also 50 brand new CCNA, NP, and NA security practice exams recently posted. So when you're done watching the videos, head on out to the website and take a look at some of those practice exams. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.